Okay, this is like one of those one bizarre tip that's going to make everybody like you videos or something. I don't know. But this is actually a an exercise that I've done myself before quite a bit. But I'm going to be incorporating it with the forest monks coming out to Rewild University this year. Because I think that this one little exercise has a lot of benefits. Now if I skip right to the exercise, I imagine some of you are going to click away because it just looks too strange. Like, what are you doing? But I'm going to do it anyway and risk that. So, here's what you do. You're going to take both hands, put them on your chest. This is so you're not using them out on the side to balance. And then you're just going to lift up one foot. But the key is, you're going to do it with your eyes closed. When we do it with our eyes closed, we should find it a lot more challenging. If you start off, you just lift it a little teeny bit. I've lifted it a couple of inches off the ground. That's one thing. But if I lift it there and that's too easy for me, then try lifting it way up high and see if you can balance then. We tend to lose our balance when we close our eyes. Is that any big deal? Well, maybe not. But by practicing this on both sides, on different terrains, you're gonna find if you try it inside on a flat floor, it's gonna be much easier. Try it on the snow or something that has uneven terrain that gives a little bit, it's gonna be much more challenging. Why do this? Okay, here's all those benefits I was talking about. First of all, balance is always a good thing. If you're walking through the woods and we're stumbling around, animals see us, people see us, we tend to get hurt. When we close our eyes, visually, unless you're already blind, then this probably doesn't apply to you. You're, you've already got this skill down. But if we're seeing, if we close our eyes, we lose our vision, our balance skills deteriorate significantly. And often I'll take people out for their very first ever pitch dark walk through the woods. And it's very sobering to see how much we're stumbling around, falling over things. As soon as we lose that vision, we lose our balance. So that's benefit number one, balance in the dark. You never know when that's going to be called upon. Benefit number two is this helps to hone your in general balance. If you're doing balance training, you just want to get better at it. What I'd recommend is that you remember to do static balance. By that I mean balancing, for instance, on a balance beam that doesn't move at all. Do dynamic balance. That's when you're walking or moving on something that shifts a lot. So out here we'll use a slack line, but a, the average kind of fallen young tree in the woods that you're balancing across is going to wiggle too and have that same effect. Then make sure you practice balance with your eyes open and again with your eyes closed. All these skills they are not the main benefit that you're going to get from this. The main benefit is going to be a mental one. Because here's often what happens. People start off with this exercise and they'll get up and they'll try it. <laughs> okay, that was fine. <sighs> ah, come on. And you can see what's happening. So I'm starting to get frustrated. If I begin to get frustrated, then the energy that I'm using in frustration is not being applied to the task at hand. I call this our self-punishment process. And most of us have this operating at some level. If this is operating inside of us, it is going to take energy away, A, from learning something, a new skill, and B, from being able to function in a real life situation. A perfect example is some of the challenges I do out here with students. Let's say it's, it's kind of a rainy, windy day, and I am taking you outside on a challenge to try to start a fire with one match. Can you do it? Now, if your mind is solely on the task, then 
A, your chances of success are going to go up, and B, even if you fail, you're going to have learned a lot because you're going to have paid attention to the different materials you used, how much attention you were paying to the, paying to the direction of the wind, if you sheltered your fire from the driving rain, you're going to learn a lot. If my self-punishment process is going on, then a lot of that energy that could have been applied towards building my skills will have just gone into being, ah, oh, this is stupid, this is impossible, why am I even trying to do this? Yeah? A lot of times, people will go out to take on a tough challenge and I can see in their eyes before they've even started. It's not gonna happen. They're not gonna make it because they've already decided that they are not up to the task. That self-punishment mechanism, that voice inside of us that says, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, this is too tough, that, that thing operates and it takes so much energy from us. This exercise is great because it helps to turn that process off. It can teach us a different way of dealing with it. Here's my first way of dealing with it. Oh, come on, Kenton. I don't even know how to balance. Here's the second way. Here, I'm just allowing myself to make mistakes and realizing that every second that I spend with my eyes closed and my leg up, my skill is increasing. So just doing it there, almost meditatively, I don't have to laugh at myself, I don't have to get down on myself. All I have to do is practice the skill and keep practicing the skill. And when I do that, I'm trusting that my body, my mind are picking it up. When I go out and I try that wet fire challenge, same thing. If I just allow myself to do it, I concentrate on performing this task as best I can, then I'm automatically going to learn. I'm automatically going to pick stuff up. It's that simple. When, when there's a real life tough situation, you know, there's that time when you're out and you, got, you lost your pack and people are depending on you to start a fire in the rain. That's when this really is going to come in. Because if you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what if I fail? I can't do this. All that energy is going into a place that does you no good. When you concentrate on that task at hand and just do it the best you can, then Nine times out of 10, you're gonna surprise yourself. It's a simple exercise. Closing your eyes, hands in, knee up. See what happens. Notice if that self-punishment process is engaged in you. If it is, just see if you can trust your body. Trust that it is learning, that it's absorbing, that it's building skills. Whenever you try anything else in life, see if you can do the same thing. Turning that process off, it's not actually too difficult. Sometimes it helps me to just think, you know what, this skill, if I can get this in 10 years, awesome. And that relieves the pressure of performance for me and allows my body, my mind to just learn a skill. That's again something I learned from my wife, Rebecca, where she would just say, you know what, give yourself 10 years to get this. And often, it happens much faster than you would imagine. Try this exercise out. Tell me if you experience that self-punishment process, where else you've experienced it in your life. And if you have noticed being able to transform it, shut it off, whatever you want to call it, how has that changed your ability to learn and to perform under difficult situations? Thanks for watching, my friends.